everyone, and welcome to the MFG Advocate. I'm Penny Brown. Today, we're talking to John Lucier with Methods Machine Tools, who's giving a speech here at the IMTS conference about the Beginner's Guide to the Industrial Internet of Things. How are you today, John? Good. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having us. So just a question for you. Could you kind of give us the definition of the Industrial Internet of Things? The Industrial Internet Things is a network of interconnected devices. Those devices could be machine tools, they could be coolant pumps, they could be machine controls, and it's really taking all of those different things that you might have in a manufacturing environment and networking them together, generating data, and then based on that data, making decisions and actions. So is that kind of the same thing as Industry 4.0? It is really similar to that. Industry 4.0 is a German term, really pushing their industry in that direction, and so it's, it's really quite similar. When you go around and give these speeches, what kind of questions are people asking you about digital manufacturing? Actually, that term IoT and IIoT, uh, we see an awful lot of people just not fully understanding what that is. Mm -hmm. And uh, wondering if I just go to the store and buy some IoT. And it's really not a thing. It's kind of a direction, it's a movement of your shop, uh, digitizing everything to, uh, or networking everything to, uh, to get better data from that. So I find a lot of the questions are just, before you go too deep in it, what is that? What does that mean to me? Sure. Mm -hmm. Now I've heard that kind of smaller and medium companies are really kind of seeing a bit of a gap in being able to adopt digital operations for their factories. Mm -hmm. What kind of risks do you think are involved with, uh, with kind of maybe getting behind on this movement? Um, I, I think there's a substantial risk. You've got to start at some point and there's a learning curve to anything that you do and if you start that process later rather than earlier then it's, it's going to take you uh, that much longer further on down the line. Um, I think just to start, just to get in there on the low level, start monitoring machines, which is something here at the show that you see an awful lot of. That's the beginning to IoT, is just machine monitoring. When is it on? When is it off? And get into it. From there, I think it, it graduates and it moves from there. Well, geez, if I can monitor this, can I also monitor that? Can I see this signal? Can I see that signal? And kind of growing from there. Sure. So maybe what kind of, I guess, business or hiring strategies should companies be making if they're looking to improve their digital operations? Um, well, that's a, interesting that you say that. In a manufacturing environment, say a machine shop or a sheet metal shop where you've got technicians and mechanics, now you're looking for a computer-based person. Maybe somebody with a strong IT background who can either work with software or work at internet connectivity, and that's a little different skill set that you see in the average machinist. So those are some of the skills I would look at. Sure. Now for a company looking to get started, where would you say they need to start first? I would say what's very popular right now is basic machine monitoring. Machine on, machine off, and then crunching the numbers on how productive you are with that. That's a, you can do that in a small case, just one machine or two machines. Uh, expand on that very easily, and I think that's a nice starting place for a small shop to get into, to get into IoT. And I think once you get your, your, uh, your feet wet, it's going to drive you to want to do more. So what kinds of these practices are you employing at Methods? At Methods Machine Tools, we have worked with several software companies and uh, we have a display in our booth where we're showing all of our machines are being monitored, both within our booth and in the larger uh, Fanuc uh, America booth. And uh, now we can see whether the machines are running. If they're not running, why they're not running. So to be able to look online to see, geez, why is that machine if I'm not in the office? and uh, say I have an automated machine to be able to know why that machine is not running and uh, we're demonstrating some of those technologies right in our booth. A lot of people, I guess, vocalize risks about cybersecurity. Can mm -hmm. you give kind of any um, thoughts on that? Absolutely. Um, the Internet of Things brings up that word Internet. And boy, I'm, I'm kind of scared to put my machine uh, on the Internet. Uh, it's a network. It's not necessarily the Internet. We don't have to go on the Internet if we don't want to at first. Uh, but there are a lot of companies that specialize in that. I think if you start small and you're just networking your machines to say on and off, I don't know that network security is so important, but as you move, um, almost all of the products have security uh, modules, if you will, and I think as you put more and more data out there, you're going to need to protect that. But I think initially, uh, maybe we're not so much going on the Internet. We're having our own local network as opposed to uh, the, the, the Internet itself. IMTS has a robust and growing conference program, and John, you're one of the speakers there. So tell us a little bit about what you're going to be telling the audience when they come to see you. 
the talk I did today was um, IIoT or the Industrial Internet of Things and really just a basic guide to it. As we go out and we talk to people about the Industrial Internet of Things, the overwhelming thought is people just don't know what it is at all, just have no way of of knowing we see the, some of the big displays here at IMTS and really don't understand how does that relate to my small three or four machine uh, machine shop. And really what I, what I tell people is if we relate it to the consumer Internet of Things, if you look at how um, the Internet of Things affects our house, home security, we have cameras, we have door and window switches that feed back to a central system and somebody monitors that. Very similar to what you do with your machine tools. Uh, Nest has got the, uh, the doorbell with a camera inside and we can talk to somebody coming out our door and even unlock that. That same sort of connectivity using that same thing in a machine tool is how I try to explain that to people. Uh, Amazon, if you've ever seen that dash button where you push that button and you get soap suds delivered to your house. Well, what if I did that same thing with coolant or cutting tools using that same sort of button deliver tooling? Um, that's that's really a, what I tell people. I relate it to, uh, coolant is a perfect example. If we could monitor the level of coolant electronically and have that somewhere, instead of somebody coming over checking the machine to see if I needed coolant, what if I knew if I needed coolant? What if I could dispense that coolant automatically? What if when I was low on coolant, I had the coolant be delivered automatically? That, I think, is the industrial internet of things. Tool holders. We see the, the machines out here selling Coca-Cola. Uh, you put some money in, you get the, tool, the, uh, the soda out. Well, that same thing with cutting tools. And that's out there right now where uh, companies will monitor that and refill those machines as needed. That's the industrial internet of things. So I think it's around us already and we just don't recognize it yet. Right, so that's getting a little bit toward the, what they call predictive maintenance versus preventative maintenance, and, right? And predict, predictive maintenance is going to be where it's at. That's where you're seeing a lot of the technologies here at the show, uh, monitoring stresses and strains in the machine, uh, forces in a ball screw to know that the bearings of the ball screw are starting to wear out. So at that point, can we have parts sent to a customer automatically and start scheduling a service guy to show up? Those are some of the new technologies. Machine monitoring, which you're going to see a lot here at the show, is uh, pretty neat stuff, but predictive maintenance, that's what you're going to see over the next couple of years. Now, when was your first IMTS? My first IMTS was 1986. And what kind of changes have you seen in this digital technology in that time? Well, each year we see it growing. I find it interesting when uh, these talks that I'm giving, when I've even listened to those talks and you hear the prediction for what happens two years from now and four years uh, from now. Um, really, as, as I mentioned, machine monitoring is, is really a big thing. Um, I think maintenance, seeing, and, and that was the talk two years ago was the predictive maintenance. I don't think it's quite there just yet, but we're a whole step further in that. They're showing some of that technology. I don't know if it's ready for the small shops just yet, but it is moving in that direction. So if people want to come talk to you or learn a little bit more about what Methods has to offer, where will you be located? Methods is located in the South Building in booth number 339-119. So I understand that Methods also offers a lot of automation technologies. Can you talk a little bit about that? Methods has quite a substantial automation uh, display at the show this year. We've got 10 different automation cells with 12 different robots and everything from very highly integrated cells to really quite simple and very inexpensive cells. Uh, we think we've got something for everybody, whether it's turning, uh, milling, we've got a lot with EDM machines we're showing as well. A uh, couple of new cells, the first time we're showing them here, integrated where we're loading not only pallets in and out of a machine, but also having a robot load tools in and out of a machine, something you don't see quite as often. So uh, we really pride ourselves. We've got a whole booth really associated with automation, and we'd love to have everybody come uh, take a look at it. It's very exciting. It is. We stopped by the Methods booth to see some of the exciting automation and digital technologies that they have on display here at IMTS 2018. So here's an example of, uh, we talked about the industrial internet of things. Here's a machine monitoring system that we're using here at the show. This is showing all of the machines in the South Hall that are hooked up to this Fanuc IPMA monitoring system. So if I focus in here, this is the Methods booth right here. And now I focused in on the machines that are in the methods booth that are hooked up to this. And here is all the different machine status and symbols that we find important when monitoring a machine on and off times of the day and different production statuses. 
This allows the small shop to know when his machine is on and making parts, which in a small shop is the most important thing. This could be on the internet, you could be tracking your machines remotely, uh, knowing what's on. A lot of times people have an automatic machine running overnight and the darn thing stops five minutes after you leave the shop. With a system like this, I'd know that it was stopped. I could go back to the shop, get it running again. But I can also crunch those numbers and see the areas that I would need to do to improve my productivity on that machine. Um, what are the spindle speeds that I'm using? Are there areas that the machine is heating up or not working as well as it might have? And by using a system like this, you're able to do that. And again, as you saw there, this is a system that we're monitoring a whole lot of machines here at the show. So you could monitor your whole shop with something like that and see it uh, remotely. Uh, other exhibitors, other manufacturers could create more apps. And so this is just the beginning, but you can keep adding on. You can have a, um, a probing app, a Marpos app. You know, Renishaw might, or Bloom might develop all these apps. Um, you know, you'll see all these other people start to make apps and you can just have custom IPMA software for your individual need is the goal. This is the beginning, this is the starting point of it all. Um, it's pretty cool. People are very excited about this. Um, I think initially for the smaller shops, they're a little uh, concerned about that or a little scared about that. And what we're trying to show here, to, sh to monitor so many machines here at the show, this is the technology. It's being shown here at the show. Make sure you come by our booth and take a look at it. Thank you. Thank you for being on the show today, John. Thank you very much for having me. This has been Penny Brown with the MFG Advocate.